Congress and the Senate and everybody involved are now talking about gun violence. It is yet again another opportunity for us to say, how can we stop these tragedies? Some people say thoughts and prayers. Some people say... Some people say thoughts and prayers. Some people say gun control. Uh, Republicans usually say, let's uh, stop the Democrats from taking your Second Amendment rights away. They're going to take our guns away. Other people say, no, we just want it harder for people to get them. We're not talking about anything you already own. And the debate goes back and forth until another mass shooting happens. For the first time in a long time, which it hasn't been a long time, but it feels like a long time, we've had two back-to-back mass shootings. Yay, America first, America. So, let's see everybody's responses and discussions about it. Another nightmare, stunning, shocking, savage, but unsurprising. Inaction has made this horror completely predictable. Inaction by this Congress makes us complicit. Now is the time for action to honor these victims with action, real action, not the fig leaves or the shadows that have been offered on the other side, along with hopes and thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers cannot save the eight victims in Atlanta or the 10 last night, including a brave police officer. Thoughts and prayers can't save the 24,000 people killed every year or the 26 blacks killed every day, the eight children killed as a result of unsecured weapons every day. Thoughts and prayers are not enough. And yet, thoughts and prayers is all we have heard from my colleagues on the other side. Thoughts Ooh. and prayers must lead to action. Because thoughts and prayers is the general way in which we say this is a tragedy and we should all, like, like you know, not be uh, complicit in trying to help gun culture and instead of just, you know, eradicating it. But for some reason... For some reason, Republicans seem to just have this, like, abated response to it. Like, oh, another mass shooting. Interesting. Well, we get funded by the NRA, so our thoughts and prayers go out to you. Because it's easy and cheap to say, may God be with you, as opposed to, let's stop, you know, the thing that's causing God to need to be with people all the damn time. To which you already know the weasel, the freak, the guy, Rafael Edward Cruz decided to retort. We've had far too many tragedies in our country. Once again, we wake up to a horrific act of mass murder. All of us lift up in prayer the families in Boulder, Colorado. Families in Atlanta that lost their lives, including the police officer in Boulder, Colorado. I can tell you in Texas, we've seen far too many of these. I was in Santa Fe the morning of that shooting. Santa Fe High School is less than an hour from my house. I was in El Paso at the Walmart for yet another senseless mass murder. I was in Dallas where five police officers were murdered by a radical. Okay, so at this point in time, because I've already seen, obviously, the tweet that goes above it. At this point in time, he's sounding pretty based. It sounds like he's getting ready to say, I can no longer see this because I've been at every goddamn event in my own state. And I've been in other states. And I just I can't imagine a world in which we continue to allow these things to happen. That's where it sounds like he's leading into. I wonder, quite frankly, where he's going to end up, because ending up is kind of the important part of this all, right? was in Sutherland Springs, in that beautiful sanctuary where a monster murdered innocent people. I've been to too damn many of these. Okay, so the next things out of your mouth should be, 
whatever we have to do to get these events to stop, let's decide to work on it instead of playing partisan games. That's what any anybody after the end of that speech, that's the immediate next thing that they would say. Because it's the only logical thing, right? Senator from Connecticut just said, it's time for us to do something. I agree. It is time for us to do something. And every time there's a shooting, we play this ridiculous theater where this committee gets together and proposes a bunch of laws that would do nothing to stop these murders. Senator from Connecticut just said the folks on the other side of the aisle have no solutions. Well, the senator from Connecticut knows that is false. And he knows that's false because Senator Grassley and I together introduced legislation, Grassley Cruz, targeted at violent criminals, targeted at felons, targeted at fugitives, targeted at those with serious mental disease. The guy who did this bought his gun legally. He was a law-abiding citizen. He wasn't a criminal until he shot people. What are you talking about? Targeted at fugitives, targeted at those with serious mental disease to stop them from getting firearms, to put them in prison when they try to illegally buy guns. What happens in this committee after every mass shooting is Democrats propose taking away guns from law-abiding citizens. Look, okay, so people see this and they're like, all right, so debate him on the, on the marketplace of ideals, right? How is the how are any like stronger gun ch- checks, uh, uh, the banning of sale of AR-15s? How is that taking guns away from people? They're not going to come into your house and be like, "All right, we're melting down your AR-15s." They're just taking them off the current market. What are you talking about? If you political theater, aren't you the guy who read Green Eggs and Ham? Are you not the same guy? because that's their political objective. But what they propose, not only does it not reduce crime, it makes it worse. The jurisdictions in this country with the strictest gun control have among the highest rates of crime and murder. When you disarm law-abiding citizens, you make them more likely to be victims. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there, and because we have to keep going with his statements, I'm not gonna sit here and unpack every statement, but we're gonna go through this last one. It makes it worse. The jurisdictions in this country with the strictest gun control have among the highest rates of crime and murder. When you disarm law-abiding citizens, you make them more likely to be victims. Okay, let's unpack that. First of all, the places with the strictest gun control are pretty much reactionary at this point. People can buy guns across city lines, across state lines, and then bring them in to places with strict gun control. So that's not that's that's not a, a an argument point. That's I, I don't know what you would call that. Is he trying to just lie? Is he just saying it to say it? Um, that doesn't make any sense if anybody were to challenge that. Also. Also. Um, law abiding citizens aren't the victims of the high of the city in the cities with the highest crime and murder because most people shoot other people that have guns like they're not just going out randomly killing people they're usually shooting other people who they have beef with them two are not innocent in their situation if you get what i mean like they're not just random bystanders that's a dumb argument because you're also alluding to the fact that people who will, you're also alluding to the fact that if all law-abiding citizens could carry guns, then the gun violence would be coming from those law-abiding citizens. You have to ask yourself where the guns are coming from, not who, how are they getting into the hands of people who use them evilly? Because again, most of the mass shooters are just like people who can get guns legally. Like, they didn't do anything criminally wrong until they did the big thing. Those are law-abiding citizens. Are you, are you dense? How are you a sitting senator and you, and maybe even in the heat of the moment, you couldn't think that out real quick? 
I agree it's a time for actions. And by the way, I don't apologize for thoughts or prayers. I will lift up in prayer people who are hurting. And I believe in the power of prayer. And the contempt of Democrats for prayers is an odd sociological thing. Why are you mad at God? Is that his argument? Why are you mad that I praise God? No one said that. You literally do not pray for these people outside of when they die. What are you talking about? Opportunity. I, I've listened to my, my uh, colleagues' comments with interest. What is wrong with Republican senators? What is wrong with the Republican Party? How do you see this and make that argument? And making that argument is so ludicrous because it gets shot down within five seconds. And we pay you for that? Your state pays you for this? There's better debate lords on Reddit. And I, I, I join um, with Senator Feinstein and, and uh, Feinstein in hoping that we can do something about this. But I do think we ought to keep this in perspective. Um, what, what has happened in the last few days, what's happened in the last years is, of course, tragic. And I'm not, I'm not trying to perfectly equate these two, but we have a lot of drunk drivers in America that kill a lot of people. We ought to, we ought to try to combat that, too. We do. We have checkpoints. We have breathalyzer tests. We have programs and advertisements warning people not to drive drunk. Cars aren't made to kill people. They're made for transportation. That's a shit argument. But I think what many folks on my side of the aisle are saying is that the answer is not to get rid of all sober drivers. Isn't that the argument? Isn't that a meme? Like, if all drunk drivers had their own lane, with like, like the bouncy car thing or whatever, like... Drivers. The answer is to concentrate on the problem. The answer is to concentrate on the problem, which still wouldn't be the drunk drivers. It would be the alcohol. Which is analogy to the guns. Are you, are you, I'm going to, I'm going to chalk this one up here. Cause maybe I'm being a little bit uncharitable here, but are you like that old that you can't see? You just made a case contradictory to the one that you think you're standing up for. Um, we have had a problem in this world for some time with both domestic and international terrorism. Many terrorists happen to be Muslims. Whoa! What does that have to... Whoa! When a, uh, when a Muslim jihadist blows up a school full of school children, we are often told not to condemn all of the actions of those of the Muslim faith because of the actions of a few. Correct. And I agree with that. So why doesn't the same rule apply to the 100 million plus gun owners in America? Because the faith doesn't tell them to do that. Having a gun means that you are increasing the likelihood of using that gun. Matter of fact, the culture is what causes the issue. So you won't reform the guns. You, won't, you don't do gun reform. Therefore, the culture becomes more of the radical ideology that you are prescribing against. That's why. Why do people want me to pull up links and shit to, like, disprove this? You can do this with your own fucking ears. Who are exercising their constitutional right. And I think we ought to keep that in mind. The right to bear and keep arms, not fire them. That's the whole, make bullets harder to get then. Yo, okay, there we go. 
there's the there's the two sides of the aisle answer to this. Make bullets harder to come by. Make them scarce. Make guns just an uh, uh, antiquity that you can only collect. And I guarantee you, you'll see gun violence go down and gun in- interest go down. Make bullets harder to come by. Instead of saying, oh, let's limit guns, how about every person in the country only get one magazine? I bet you care about your 30 bullets then. I bet you we could track and, like, engrave the bullets to know who it was sold to, where it came from, all that. What is it? Sol- what? Ladies and gentlemen, as we talk about this issue. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard this in my meet up. life. Who advertised this meetup? who advertise this meet up and go through a background check. Um, and frankly, the people who are already willing to break current laws are going to continue to break those laws. They're not going to say, oh, well, the government said I have to go through a background check to do this when they're already willing to sell to criminals or to, to skirt those laws. Um, just because it's doubly illegal is not going to matter to them. I, I just wonder where, where this is headed. I mean, where, where, are, we actually, where are we actually going with, with these proposals? Hey, shut up. You advertise this like a- meet up and go through Dickhead. Rights as a and Americans are turning to their Second Amendment rights as a way to protect themselves and their families. Many people were so disconcerted with the violence that they saw last year on our streets, the rioting that took place during the summer. Oh, God. So people are shooting up malls and shit because of Antifa. What a reach. What a reach. As if you could not figure out anything else to say. You're going to play the old card that's been literally drawn out to its, like, entirety. So Antifa, if Antifa goes away, you guys won't want guns anymore? Got it. And they're fearful. And they want to make certain that they are prepared to protect their families safety and they worry the police won't respond fast enough if their communities are victims of an attack so that's dumb so in other words police can't shoot people fast enough so we should have the ability to hold people and shoot them if they pose a threat got it now our friends on the left always want to go straight to gun control as the solution for reducing this problem of violence. Before we start looking at controlling the rights of law-abiding citizens and regulating their guns and even setting the grounds to confiscate their guns. Fear-mongering. Fear-mongering is your play. You're all going to hype up the idea of Obama's taking your guns again and people are going to fall for it. Wow, this is insanity. Why don't we look at why this violence has increased to begin with? Notably, there has been extended, systematic attacks on our police and law enforcement professionals for years, calling them racist and bigoted and prejudiced, demanding that they be defunded and replaced with social workers. That's not... See, this is where I can give him the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I know he listens to his own party's messaging, but if you took one second to step outside your bubble and ask what defund the police really meant, it has nothing to do with replacing them. Holy shit. You make you have a six billion dollar budget. Can you knock that down to four? That's all that that's literally the request. When you condemn the police, when you make it harder to do their job, you shouldn't be surprised that criminals take advantage of the opportunities that follow. Yeah, but like law-abiding citizens can buy guns to do mass shootings. So if both sides of the art of the aisle have the same issue, could we address the mental health? Like you won't even fund public health care for things like that. Like, do you understand how difficult this shit is to like argue? <clears throat> because it's, in order to have this debate on gun control, you have to do you have to do something before then. And you have to admit that what you're saying is valid. Like that's such an ugly spin on the conversation like why would you do this? Why have you done this? What is wrong with you?
Oh, why are you calling me if you can't hear me? <sighs> anyway. And that crime rises and that in particular, violent crime rises. Likewise, some on the left like to complain about mass incarceration as if there are too many people locked up in our prisons when more than half of all violent crimes don't even result in an arrest, much less a prosecution or a conviction. That's what? Oh, oh, he said the quiet part out loud. Oh, shit. He said the quiet part out loud. If half of violent crime doesn't end up in an arrest, a uh, prosecution or a conviction, then what are half of the people in prison in there for? Nonviolent crimes? Oh. Oh, he said the quiet part out loud, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <clears throat> we got him. Let me tell you a story about Hassan Elliott in Philadelphia. He's a member of the 1700 gang that's responsible for many mass murders. In June of 2017, he was arrested on a firearms charge after threatening a neighbor with a gun. Despite the criminal record, he only received seven months in jail. He then violated his parole. He failed drug tests. He was arrested with cocaine, yet he was not sent back to jail. And if because that's a nonviolent crime, and that would go against what you just said. I, I'm not trying to be funny here. This is not making logical sense. A few months later, he allegedly murdered someone with a gun when he should have been in jail. Later, he also murdered a police officer. All of this was preventable if prosecutors had simply followed the law and supported their local police and locked up Mr. Elliott as they should lock up so many other violent felons across the country. That's, that's hard. That's so hard. What happens in this camp is that every time a kid loses a finger, the counselors want to take the lit firecrackers out of the hands of the other kids holding them. Every time one of the kids gets murdered by an undex axe-wielding psycho, they keep trying to close the camp and take it away from all the other kids that are still alive. Yep. After every mass shooting, how many times do we have to soften the back black and stone you call a heart? Yeah, after the phrase, after every mass shooting ought to be a red flag for everybody. Was the cop that was killed not a law-abiding citizen armed with a gun and yet it didn't prevent... This is... This is insane. This is insanity. It's, it, it's a bunch of non sequiturs and people complaining about nothing. Jesus Christ. Is there anything here for, oh, there's some more on gun control, okay. It, the, second, Jessica, it, the, these are not weapons of war. These are not assault rifles. These are semi-automatic weapons. They just look different. Second, Jessica, I need, th these are not weapons of war. These are not assault rifles. These are semi-automatic weapons. They just look different. Nice argument, bro. Nice argument there. Oh, that's beautiful. Nice one. Good, good showing. A kitchen knife is, a, is meant for the kitchen. Doesn't mean it can't be or isn't a weapon. Jesus. These are M16s. The only difference is they don't have an automatic function, but the killing capacity of both the round and velocity is identical weapon used in combat. AR-15s are weapons of war, and saying they aren't is just silly. Wow, I'm impressed. Like, Fox News is really doing a number here. I, I can't argue that. That's insane. And I hate politics. I'm in politics because I hate it. I hate it because of hypocrisy, and that's what we're seeing today. Amazing. Republicans are just, uh, oh, more Fox News greatness on gun control here. It's not an, uh, a deterrent either. People who are un unhinged are going to do things uh, that are terrible, and it's horrible, and I feel terrible for the family of the police officers and the other families of the victims, but this gun control language is political. If they want to look, if they want to really talk about how to prevent these kind of crimes, let's talk about mental health in this country and how to make sure that really dangerous people don't have access to these guns. Congressman um, is not an, uh, a deterrent to murder either. People who are un unhinged are going to and I feel terrible for the family of the police officers and the other families of the victims. But this gun control language is political. 
Wow. How do we determine who is mentally unhinged before they pick up an assault rifle and t- murder 10 people? A background, checks, a background check, perhaps? Jesus. What's happening here is, like, let's talk about Colorado, right, which is now being used as this pretext to go gun grabbing, basically, to, to enforce these gun control laws. Colorado has universal background checks. Colorado has gun-free zones. Colorado has red flag gun control laws. Um, and Colorado has extended state background checks. And yet this criminal was still uh, able to, to commit this horrific crime. And so the point of all this is that criminals don't follow the law. That is why they are criminals. Um, That's the shittiest argument ever. So it's the rule of insanity, but we're not do we're not doing the same thing over and over again. That's that, but doesn't he make a point though? If they have these restrictions, and gun violence has not gone down, maybe they are not as effective as we've been saying this whole time. If gun if gun laws aren't stopping people, maybe we need to focus on gun control instead. Like Jesus. If you follow this train of logic, we shouldn't have laws about anything because criminals are just going to break the law anyway. No need to make murder or stealing illegal because criminals are going to do it anyway. It's what makes them criminals. Yeah, like so why have laws? Oh, he's an anarchist. Yeah, we got a right wing anarchist. Fucking moron. God, that's such a bad argument. Insanity. So, in other words, what I'm gathering here is that obviously there are two sides to this conversation. People think that Democrats want to take your guns and people think that Republicans just don't give a shit about gun violence at all. One of them is true. One of them is half true. Preferably for me, I'm not a gun user. Having a gun on me wouldn't make me feel more safe in any environment. Because like I've said, I'm a teacher. For me to think that, oh, I could carry a gun, you never know when I might need it. Like, if a school shooting is going down and the guy shoots one kid, I already didn't save a life. Like, me gunning him down before he get. what if I get shot? What if I die? Now the guy got two guns unloading double the ammo. Like, if you want to make the joke, you have to deal with the reality. Like, why not make it harder for people to get the guns? Is I don't understand how this is a, 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 I don't even want to say political issue because at the, but I could, I, I don't get how this is an issue that people are divided on. You don't want to see gun violence. So you want to either remove the criminals who will use said guns or you want to remove the guns so criminals can't get them. But the criminals don't become criminals all the time until they get the gun. People who are law-abiding citizens can still get the gun. So if both sides can do the thing, why not hinder the thing that they gonna do you know preventative this is sad this is wow wow you've oh i applaud you because you've gone in a full circle in your entire argument and you've said absolutely nothing absolutely nothing impressivo 20 30 minutes of my time to figure out that wow y'all really full of shit 